So, your metabolism, all the billions of reactions that happen inside your cells every second of your life, they've got to happen fast. Now, the temperature that most of your cells are kept at means that these reactions tend to go naturally quite slowly. Enzymes, though, are molecules that can speed up these reactions, and they can speed them up without getting used up themselves. And that's why they're called biological catalysts. So enzymes can actually speed up a reaction by up to 10 to the 21 times. They are extremely effective. Enzymes are globular proteins, and you should know all about protein structure from when you studied it earlier on in the course. Most of the names of enzymes end, end in A's. They have a very specific shape because of the bonding as explained in the protein structure. Uh, so because of the primary structure of the protein, the chain of amino acids, the protein will fold up and form a very specific shape. Because of this specific shape and because of an area called the active site in the enzyme, they have what we call a high specificity. What this means is that they will catalyze usually only one reaction, so you need one enzyme for one reaction. Now the active site, this bit where the, the substrate is going to bind into, the substrate is the molecule that the enzyme will act on, the active site where the substrate binds into is very, very small. It's a very small part of that enzyme. And its shape will be dependent on that amino acid sequence and how, that, uh, how they fold up. The substrate will bind into it by forming little weak and non-covalent interactions with the R groups of the active site's amino acids. Now, enzymes can either help break something down, which is called a catabolic reaction, or they can build something up, which is an anabolic reaction. How do the enzymes and the substrate bind? Well, there's two hypotheses that you should know about, the lock and key and the induced fit. So first of all, lock and key. Now, this is basically the idea that the active site has a very specific rigid shape that is perfectly complementary to the substrate. They fit together like a lock and a key. And this model explains just how, you know, this idea of the specificity of enzymes. It explains that really, really well. And for a long time, this was the only theory of how enzymes worked. If you look at this animation, this is the idea. Here's an enzyme. Here's a substrate. The substrate enters that active site, which is perfect. It's a perfect fit. They're complementary to each other. An enzyme substrate complex forms, the reaction occurs, and the products are then free to leave the active site, and the enzyme can be, um, go and, and do the same thing over and over again. Now, in the induced fit model, it's more likely that the active site is not a rigid shape, but one that is more flexible. Once the substrate enters the active site, it then molds around the enzyme. It fits in, but it's not this perfect shape to begin with. Now, due to X-ray crystallography, this model has gained a lot more credibility in recent years. So you can see here, the enzyme and the substrate are not a perfect match to each other. But as the substrate moves in, the enzyme's active site molds around that, that substrate. The reaction occurs, the products form and leave the active site, and the active site actually then returns back to its original shape. So certain variables can affect how fast an enzyme catalyzes a reaction. The four variables we're looking at here are enzyme concentration, substrate concentration, temperature, and pH. So basically, for an enzyme substrate complex to form and for a reaction take, to take place, they've got to collide. An enzyme and a substrate have got to bump into each other. Essentially, these molecules are just moving around with a given amount of kinetic energy in straight lines. And if they bump into each other and they collide with enough energy, then that is going to have that a reaction will take place. So affecting the concentrations of enzymes and substrates is going to have an effect on the rate of reaction because there's more chance or less chance of them colliding. But also changing the kinetic energy of these molecules is going to mean there's going to be more or less chance of them colliding as well. So let's start with enzyme concentration. Now enzymes are actually really, really efficient. You only need a very small amount of them for a reaction to work. However, if you do add more, then the rate of reaction will increase. Uh, as shown by this uh, straight line graph here, substrate concentration. Now essentially, if you increase the substrate concentration, then there's gonna be more chance of an enzyme colliding with a substrate molecule. There are more substrate molecules uh, moving around, more chance an enzyme's gonna come across one and bump into it and a collision is gonna happen. However, there becomes a certain point where the rate stops increasing because it doesn't matter how many more substrate molecules you add, the enzymes are all busy. 
they're saturated, they're, all their active sites are full, they can't uh, combine with any more substrates any quicker, and so that graph is gonna level off and plateau out. We say at this point that Vmax has been achieved, and this is the maximum rate of reaction. At that point, if you add some more enzymes, then the reaction can start increasing again, but any more substrate is gonna have no greater effect on the rate of the reaction. Now, temperature is a little bit different because temperature is all about kinetic energy. If you heat up a molecule, it will move around more and more and more. It has more kinetic energy, it will move quicker. So if we heat enzymes up, they will start to move around faster and they're more likely to, to have a successful collision with a substrate molecule. So as you can see from the graph, an increase in temperature means an increase in the rate of reaction. However, at a certain point, the amount of kinetic energy starts to interfere with the bonds in the, in the molecule and the enzymes bonds, the tertiary and quaternary structure, it starts to break down. Now, that is obviously so, so important to the function of this molecule. It has this really specific shape. And so if it starts to lose that shape because the bonding starts to break, it's usually the weaker bonds, such as hydrogen and ionic bonds that break first, then the uh, active site will no longer fit in this, um, fit the substrate and uh, it will stop being able to catalyze reactions. And very quickly, as you can see by the graph, uh, the rate of reaction decreases back uh, all the way down to zero as denaturation occurs. Now this is a permanent change to the enzyme. It's not reversible. You cannot go back once the enzymes have become denatured. What about pH? Well, it's not too dissimilar from uh, temperature in terms of the fact that there is an optimum a level at which the molecule will behave and work at its best. Most enzymes work at pH 7, although some can work at extremes of pH, such as pepsin in your stomach, which works best at about pH 2. Now, if you go outside of that optimum, either more acidic or, or more alkali, then again, the bonding starts to be affecting, affected by those hydrogen ions, uh, and the hydrogen bonds um, and disulfide bonds start to change or break um, and the 3D shape starts to be lost and again that active site and that uh, substrate no longer fit and the enzyme becomes denatured.